My name is Katia, I'm an architect and a member of the DDPA, and I'm here to talk about housing serving new generations. As an example, I will discuss a case study of Vauban in Germany, which is a new neighbourhood of 2200 residents, which was developed between the late 1990s and early noughties. In terms of its sustainability, it's very uh, impressive in term, uh, socially, economically, architecturally and technologically. It's a very diverse neighbourhood uh, which houses citizens from all backgrounds of different age groups. Um, it's economically, the housing in this neighbourhood was delivered generally below the market rate um, and there was 20% affordable uh, social housing. Architecturally, it's very diverse, it's quite attractive, and technologically, it has very high energy credentials, much higher than elsewhere in Germany at the time. Um, the land for this development became available um, on the outskirts of the city of Freiburg after the French uh, vacated some barracks in the area after the reunification of Germany, and the plot was approximately 15 and a half hectares. After the land became available, the city decided to create a working group to uh, develop a brief for its development. Um, the working group comprised about 300 citizens and professionals and with the support of the city um, and some funding from the city. And it was a community initiative for ecological and community planning of the area. This group, the Vaubon Forum, uh, provided a brief for the master plan for the area. And they decided that they wanted high density housing rather than individual houses. They wanted spaces for small businesses and public buildings like schools and libraries. They said they wanted um, to reduce the dependence on cars and to create a car free city relying on cycling, walking and good, good public transport. They wanted very high environmental and building standards above and beyond what was standard in Germany at the time. And they wanted to preserve natural features and trees and such in the area. The master plan became part of a competition, uh, which was won by a group of architects, landscape architects and plan uh, transfer planners from Stuttgart. And the team engaged with the local community to develop um, a master plan, which, is what we see here. So the master plan took on board the brief and um, it relied on a ring road around the housing development. So if you had a car, you would be able to approach the neighborhood um, through the ring road. You could drive up to most houses in your car and drop off your shopping, but to store your car, you had to go back to one of the car parks on the perimeter. And this allowed the streets where the houses were positioned to be mostly car free uh, places where children can play with kind of pedestrian paths, um, cycle paths and uh, a lot of landscaping. The master plan included small plots suited to small building cooperatives. So that was part of the brief that the development of this area was to be made by um, cooperatives rather than large scale developers. And the maximum heights of the developments were set at 12 and a half meters, which were decided again in collaboration with the um, Vauban group, but it was considered a height that was um, a human scale that was affordable to build and where the residents could call their children um, if they're playing uh, on the ground floor in between the streets from any apartment. The execution, so the, the mass, once the master plan was set in stone, the city built the infrastructure it provided transport links, public buildings, road and schools and such. Um, and then each plot was generally developed by um, these small building cooperatives called BAU groups. Um, they were comprised of 10 to 50 future owners and the city encouraged uh, a various mix of ages and future occupiers and backgrounds in each cooperative. The city gave preference to groups of citizens over commercial developers to develop each plot and it sold the plots of land to these cooperatives at a set price so there was no bidding for land which helped to keep the price down. The city also offered mortgage um, and land purchase supports to each cooperative so each cooperative um, acted as a group when applying for mortgages and loans which made it more effective and easier to get funding. The houses um, 
each block was developed by each building cooperative with their own architect and their own builder. And um, each of them had their own architectural qualities, which helped to create a very diverse neighborhood and very attractive. The spaces in between the houses were designed as part of the developments. Um, each house had very, very high ecological credentials, including some to passive house standard. And the car-free play streets in between the houses were a very attractive and very successful feature of these developments, as you can see in this image. So um, the neighborhood at the moment is very, very successful. Um, it's benefited from the vision and support from an empowered local authority, which um, helped an assembly of citizens to set a progressive master plan um, with the engagement of the citizen from the beginning. Um, the city offered support um, and preference to building cooperatives, which helped to keep the land costs down, which helped people to secure funding and um, execute each block to, to their own needs. And those information and continuous support provided before, during and after implementation. And in the end, the neighborhood is very, very successful. I visited it um, around 2009 and um, it was a wonderful place to be. And I really hope that there is space for um, a neighborhood like that in Dublin uh, in future housing. Thank you.